Good morning everybody, welcome back to the shop. Well, it's been a long time coming, but I'm finally here. Shooting the intro for a series of videos on building a CNC plasma table. It's been two years ago now since I built the CNC router table. And its original design intent had been to be a multi-purpose machine where it would do both. But I rapidly learned that that wasn't realistic, and at least not for my design and, and my needs. So I decided I would just build a second, uh, a second table with its own linear motion and reuse the control podium. Now, if you're new to this channel or you haven't otherwise seen the videos, I might suggest you take a pause here and go watch the overview video and the lessons learned videos that I did on my router table. I didn't shoot step-by-step -step videos on building it because, well, I didn't know what the next step was going to be. This time, with a CNC plasma table, not only am I much more aware of what the next steps are going to be, it's also, in my mind, a lot simpler build to make. There are some things about a CNC plasma table that make the design simpler, lighter, and easier than that which you need with a router table. And we're going to talk about those. Although a video that goes on and on talking about things isn't really the most entertaining, and I understand that, the build of a machine like this requires that you spend a fair amount of time doing just that, designing it and thinking it through and, and deciding what should or shouldn't work or what may or may not work. As part of thinking through the design, I want to share with you some of the more important concepts that I wanted to focus on when it came to building this machine. So I have a couple of them written down and I thought we'd go through them. In an effort to be something more than just me sitting here yakking, we're going to build the first part of this machine uh, at the same time. And I'll put a video in one of the corners and, and we'll break away to that uh, at opportune times. Um, we're going to start by building the basic frame and the basic frame is just 2x2 two two tubing and some 2x2 two two angle iron cut to length and welded together. Something else I want to do during this video series is point out alternative ways to achieve the same thing as far as how I'm building it. I am blessed to have a lot of really nice pieces of equipment in the shop uh, which give me a lot of options. And that said, I'm going to use the one that produces what I feel is the best result, the easiest for me. But at the same time, I want to point out places where I might be using a big piece of equipment that you could do just as well with something else. For instance, um, I'm going to use the horizontal bandsaw in cutting all this material. But the reality is you could use a four and a half inch angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I've become kind of enamored with that cutting method when it comes to doing detailed work. I am going to assume that if you're watching this video that you're at least willing to spend a little money such that you can have a working machine and, and produce things from it. And by that I mean you're eventually going to buy a plasma cutter and so I'd encourage you to just buy it now because you can use it for doing things like cutting the structural steel. You're also going to want a grinder for uh, grinding or, or cleaning up your pieces as they come off the machine. Buy that now if you don't already have it. And I know I'm speaking to probably the significant minority of people, but hey, if you're going from zero to a CNC plasma table, it's not going to be an easy task, but it sure won't be insurmountable. And so I'm going to do my best to help point out ways where you can build this machine without having to have a lifetime collection of tools. For a little context, uh, the video that you're seeing where I'm cutting out some of the structural steel for the table uh, is done in an area of the shop I call the West Bay. And the West Bay is an unconditioned space. And it was 17 degrees out there when this video was shot. It's minus one out there right now, and so I'm in here shooting. The, the design considerations that, that I found to be most guiding in what I did were important enough that I wrote them down and I, I don't take notes very often. Um, the primary driver for my design, and it is strictly for me, but just so you know, is I'm going to reuse the control podium from the CNC router. It contains all the motor drivers, the stepper drivers, the control computer, 
the Ethernet smooth stepper, the monitor, and everything. And it's a plug-in design where the cables just all plug into the side of it. So because I'm going to reuse that, I can unplug the cables out of the router. I can wheel it through the door into the West Bay where I will, where I do my cutting and grinding and plug it into the other machine. But that choice to do that means that the motors I'm going to use have to be compatible with the power supplies and the steppers that I have. And that means I've chosen to use NEMA 34s. You don't have to use 34s for a machine like this. NEMA 23s will work just fine, especially on the Y-axis where they're stepped down, where they're geared down. It's not a problem. So when you see I've used 34s, know that they are overkill. They are a lot smaller than what's on my router. And if you compare the two videos, you'll notice they're shorter. They have less torque, but they'll handle the same voltage as my other ones, and hence the control cabinet will go with them. So, design driving force number one, reuse the you. The second thing in my design that I focused on was the environment it was going to work in and what it was doing. A CNC router is generally working in a plastics or wood-based situation. Sure, you, you might do aluminum. I, I do a little bit of aluminum on mine. Um, but those are all, in my mind, fairly clean uh, environments. You might get a little dust, but that's about it. Now, if you've done any plasma cutting, welding and grinding, you know that the dirt from that is very gritty and very nasty. And high dollar linear rails or ball bearing rails of almost any kind, unless they're very well shielded out of the dirt, um, are, are gonna get grit in them. And, and that grit is going to cause failure. And I know that that's what this environment is like. So I wanted a design in the linear rails that was very dirt tolerant. Um, it needed to be uh, firm enough and accurate enough, but at the same time, uh, a little grit wasn't going to bring the whole thing to its, to its knees. So, it had to work in a dirty environment. Although the desire to be uh, grit and dirt tolerant uh, ruled out, in my mind, linear rails, I also didn't want a real expensive solution. So, the design concept I came up for my linear rails uh, is not only dirt tolerant, but fairly inexpensive because we're going to make them. And we'll go through that in one of the future videos. Inexpensive linear rails was important to me. And the other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to build it lighter weight. I didn't want to overbuild it. I didn't want this thing to be such a monstrosity that I couldn't move it. And in fact, I've already ordered casters for this, locking casters that I can move this thing around. Space is now a limit for me in the West Bay where I do my cutting and grinding. Um, but uh, I wanted to build it lighter weight. And that is something that I want to bring up because it's probably, it's probably one of the places that I've cut the most number of corners and, uh, and feel like I'm running the closest to the edge on. And that is lightweight. Um, I don't need to pick this thing up and put it in my pickup truck or anything like that, but there were a couple things about a CNC router that require rigidity and a heavy weight and stiffness uh, and no lash and all of those kinds of things, although you don't want lash in a CNC plasma table either. Things about a CNC router table that require certain design principles like heft and rigidity uh, don't apply near as much to a CNC plasma table. To start with, there's no lateral forces on, on the head. The torch itself comes down and will touch off the plate and then lifts up. And really all the motors and the framework have to do is move its own mass through, this, through air. If you crash into something, um, that's a failure altogether and, and you need to be able to account for that. Uh, I've seen designs where the whole torch head is held on with magnets, so if it crashes into something, the torch just falls off and the operator can hit an e-stop. And although I don't know that my design is going to go to that extent, the rigidity around the framework itself is nothing like a router table has to be. The other part of a CNC plasma table that, in my mind, is going to allow you to get away with some 
uh, a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of sag maybe, um, and I, I'm talking thousands of an inch of sag at this point, um, and even some misalignment is the fact that a CNC plasma table is best built, and mine will be built, with what's called a torch height control. And the torch height control automatically compensates for your z-axis height. So honestly, if your gantry was built kitty wampus, a torch height control would compensate for that as the carriage goes across, it would be lowering the z based on its inputs from the torch itself. So although we're not gonna build one all kitty wampus, that tolerance and, and that level of precision that you would want in a CNC router table, you can be a little bit more relaxed with in a CNC plasma table. The lack of lateral forces against the carriage and the automatic control of the Z height means that in my mind, my design could stand to be built a lot lighter than three inch square tubing and continuously supported linear rails like I did on my router table. The overall table height to the level at which the pieces of sheet metal are going on is going to be 30 inches. Uh, I, height, that's, that's the height of your average dining room table. And there's no need to have it any higher. This isn't a workbench. And really it will make loading sheet metal onto it uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you don't have to lift it up high, just on they go. The table on this machine is going to have a 48 inch uh, capacity in the x-axis and then like my router you can slide anything in it because it's open end to end uh, but the table itself will be 48 by 48 working area uh, physical size of the water tray is going to be 52 by 52 uh, allowing some tolerance about where the sheet metal is put and not running right up to the edge and hitting the edge of the water tray so let's talk about the material selection that I'm using for the base it boils down to what I've got you saw where I was selecting steel from what I, I call inventory. Um, that's material that I've purchased over time. Sometimes I need one piece, I'll buy three or four. And uh, I got a deal on a bunch of two inch square tubing. So I'm gonna use that real extensively in this design. It's uh, also uh, readily available and not too hideously expensive if you want to follow this design. I threw in some angle iron simply because uh, it was easy. Um, not a lot of concern around how this part of the machine was built. The one thing I do want to try and do is, if I can, leave enough room to slide a plasma cutter underneath it. Now, in my case, I don't have a dedicated plasma cutter for this table, so it might not happen initially. And at this stage of the game, I'm a little concerned because with a 30 inch overall height, casters on the bottom, a six inch deep water tray, uh, the length of the legs such that putting a, uh, a mesh shelf underneath to set a plasma cutter on is gonna be fairly limited space. I might have to get real creative someday if I can't get it on a, on a full table. So with everything cut, I'm tacking it together. I'm not doing a full weld here because to be honest with you, this part of the machine I feel is the least baked in the design and I, I'm afraid for some changes involved here so I'm gonna do some good heavy tacks and then uh, I'll finish welding it later on as the design comes together. We've covered the background and the design considerations and we've got the bench itself all tacked together so we're gonna end this video here and move into the wood shop where we'll build the next parts. So thanks for stopping by the shop, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. You good boy? Dad? Hey, you good boy? Oh, I'm a good boy, Dad.